Murder by Expert. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Expert with your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, world famous mystery novelist whose books have been translated into 17 languages and have sold over 10 million copies, and author of the recently published detective novel, Below Suspicion. Good evening. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Expert brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective writers. Tonight, our guest expert is the noted mystery writer, Max Ehrlich. From the thousands of thrillers he has read and enjoyed, Mr. Ehrlich has selected an adventure of that fast-moving, humorous young detective couple, Susan and Johnny Duke, written by Andrew Phillips. And now we present Anne Shepard and Larry Haynes in The Unseeing Witness. The name's Duke, Johnny Duke. You know, it's a funny thing. In the movies and on the radio, private eyes are always big, handsome, two-fisted guys working day and night on sensational cases, collecting heavy fees and beautiful blondes. Me? I'm five feet seven, and if I don't land the first punch, I usually end up on the floor. The cases I get? Well, they're not sensational, and they barely pay expenses, and... There's never a beautiful blonde involved. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. I take that morning last week. I was sitting right here in my office when the door opened. And the day came. Yeah, she was a blonde, all right, and beautiful. She stood there for a moment, and we just stared at each other. She crossed to my desk, and then slowly and deliberately kissed me. Then she got down to business. Johnny, it's the first to the month. Yeah, I know. We've got $54.23 in the bank. I know, Duchess. Johnny, you'll never guess who I bumped into yesterday. The last person in the world I ever expected. Inspector Ross. Where'd you bump into him, baby? In his office? What a suspicious nature you have. Johnny, I'm sure he'd give you back your job on the floor. No, Susan. Well, can't blame a girl for trying. I know things are tough, Duchess, but I'll... Well, Kay, what are you doing here? Oh, Susan. Johnny, you've got to help me. Well, what's wrong, Kay? They've arrested Bill. Bill? Yeah. What for? Murder. Oh, Susan, I've been going crazy. Bill didn't come home all night. They called me from the police station a half hour ago, but they wouldn't let me talk to him. All right, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, Kay. Now, one thing at a time. Who's been murdered? Duval. Gracie Duval? Uh-huh. The, the mug who owns the Pelican Club? That's right. Well... Why did they think Bill did? I don't know. When he left the house last night, he said he was going to the Pelican Club. Why? Well, Duval asked Bill to handle a lawsuit for him last night. Oh. Didn't he know Duval was a mobster? Yes, and that's why I wanted him to get out of it. Well, didn't he? But that's why he went there last night. But he didn't come back. Oh, Johnny, what'll I do? What'll I do? All right, all right. Now get hold of yourself, Kate. It's one thing to bring a murder charge, and another thing is a stick. Now, you just sit tight. I want to get to the Pelican Club before the cops and Inspector Ross, in particular, mess up the evidence. No, Johnny, this is one case that's open and shut. Uh, That's what you say about all of them, Inspector. Yeah, well, this time I can prove it. Well, look, would you mind letting the Duchess and me look over the room where Duval was killed? Not at all. Right through this doorway. Mrs. Duke said, mind courses. Doc didn't do his examination yet. Oh, no. I'm used to them. Uh, Bill Cross is a friend of mine, Inspector. I can't believe he's a murderer. You don't have to take my word for it, Johnny. Hey, Kelly, bring Benedict in. Benedict was Duval's manager. He'll tell you. Did you want to see me, Inspector? Yes, Benedict. This is Johnny Duke. Tell him what you told me a little while ago. Well, um... Fellow Carlson came into the club last night a little before midnight. He had an appointment with Duval. I showed him in here, and I left the club. This morning, when I knocked on the door, it was unlocked by Carlson. Duval was lying on the floor, dead. Get that, Johnny? Carlson was here all night. 
Hey, Doc, you finished looking at the body? Yes. Preliminary examination shows that death occurred between 4 and 6 in the morning. It was caused by suffocation. You mean Duval was strangled, Doctor? No, there are no bruises on the throat. Apparently, he was smothered. An autopsy will give us his answer. I'll have it for you in 24 hours or so, Inspector. I'm a little busy. That's all right, Doc. No rush. Couldn't someone else have come into the office during the night and smothered Duval? No, nope, that's impossible. Johnny, take a look at the lock on this door. It can't be opened from the hall, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, what's in the next room? That was Duval's bedroom. There's one window in here and one in there. Neither of them's been opened. A dust test proves that. Now, you tell me how anyone could have gotten in here last night. Go on, darling. Tell him. Uh, I, I'm afraid I can't. Uh... Of course you can't. May I uh, go now, Inspector? Uh, just a minute, Benedict. These uh, empty champagne bottles in the wine buckets and these two glasses, when were they served? Oh, um, yeah, just before I left last night, I had one of our men bring them up. Then you weren't the last man to see Duval last night? Well, uh, not exactly. But you've got a short memory, fortunately. You, you get the man who served it. I assure you, he doesn't know anything about it. Go ahead, do as Mr. Duke says. All right. Just a moment. Johnny, don't you ever get tired asking questions? No, of course not. Why, if Johnny hadn't asked me the way to Times Square, which he knew all the time, we'd never have met. Here's the man that served the champagne last night. Well, if it isn't Melvin. Johnny Duke. Johnny. Well, how are you, Melvin? Say, where have you been since I last saw you? Well, I found myself up against the gun for trying to fit the mitt into a five yards of sleepy hollow. What did he say, dear? Oh, oh, he says he just served five years at the state prison in Clinton. Oh. Uh, oh, Melvin, Melvin, this is my wife, Susan. Duchess, this is Melvin Maloney, better known as Melvin the Muscle. Yes, he's quite a twist in the twirl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johnny, why don't you ever say things like that to me? Uh, uh, say, uh, Melvin, I, I understand you were the one who served this campaign last night. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. well, well, tell me, what happened? Nothing. Mr. Benedict hands it to me. I takes and knocks on the door. The valve opens up, grabs the bottle of sparkle, and shuts the door. I hear him lock it. Uh -huh. What else do you know? Well, that's all, Johnny, honest. I wouldn't hold out on you. Well, Johnny, what do you say now? Well, I'm not going to say anything, Inspector, until I hear Coffee's story. <coughs> Hello, Bill. Johnny, Susan, how did you know? Hey, told me. Where is she? Is she all right? She was nearly out of her mind when she came to the office this morning. She must have been poor kid. They wouldn't let me talk to her. Said they'd call her. Bill, Bill, did you kill DeVal? I never wanted to kill anybody in my life. Did you kill him, Bill? I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right, I'm here to help you if I can. Now, tell me what happened. Well, I was working on a lawsuit for DeVal. Yeah, I know about that. What happened when you went to the Pelican last night? I think DeVal was waiting for me in his office. Mm -hmm. I told him I was going to quit. Handed him the papers I'd been working on and gave him my bill. Then what happened? Well, he tried to talk me into staying on. While we were arguing, someone knocked on the door and brought in a couple of bucks of champagne. We started to drink, and Duval got mean. Yeah. Finally, he took a poke at me. He missed. So I kept him on the chin, and I knocked him out. Well, what happened next? I don't remember anymore. I must have gone into the next room and then passed out. Uh -huh. And no one came in during the night? I don't know. I told you I passed out. Well, when did you come to? This morning. Someone knocked on the office door. I got up and unlocked it. Uh, the key was on the inside? Yes. When I opened the door, Benedict was standing there, and Duval was sprawled on the floor. Dead. Is that all you can tell me, Bill? That's all I know. How do you think it looks, Johnny? Well, the trouble is you haven't told me anything that breaks down the case against you. Mountain will find a way. So long, Bill. So long, Johnny. Thank you. Goodbye, Bill. Well, darling, what are you going to do? To help him out, I mean. I uh, don't know, Duchess. The best thing to do is to go home and sleep over it. <laughs> if Bill didn't do it, then it's the perfect murder. Wake 
up to find my wife choking. I was working on a theory. Well, it doesn't work. Well, I'm grateful for that. Now go to sleep. Huh? I can't sleep. I keep thinking of poor Kay and Bill. I'm glad I asked her to stay with us. Yeah, yeah, so am I. Now, Duchess, it's after two. I can remember when you used to do everything under the moon to keep me out until 2 o'clock. Engine trouble, out of gas, flat tires, emotion of the battery. Darling, you never did explain to me what emotion of the battery is. Oh, there ain't no such animal, baby. Oh. <laughs> then you just made it up to keep me out. Oh, did I know what would come of it? Now go to sleep, please, Betty. I can't. I... Oh, great. Who can that be? All right, time? all right. Stay where you are, Betty. I'll get it. All right, take it easy. Can't you see I'm coming? Johnny, what? Johnny, let me... Uh, Malcolm, why are you shaking, oh, Johnny? Come on, come on. Into the room. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Duke. I'm sorry to crack you. Uh, is that a new dance you're doing, Melvin? My knife, my knife. You're under the loop. All right, all right. Now stand oh, still Johnny, for just I, a I, second, Melvin. Johnny, who was at the door? Uh, oh, Kay, this is Melvin. Melvin, this is Kay. Oh, I'm happy to meet you. Yes, you too. All right, now, what happened? Johnny, I'm as good as up the handle. What? Yeah, under you can... Three messes ride me out to the meadows, giving me to kill all the way. The cross was on me, and they was doing the swamp. Johnny, what's he saying? I see huh? three. Oh, uh, three men took Melvin for a ride, but he managed to escape. Really? He was nice to him. Yeah, I mean, it's the truth. Melvin, uh, who's putting the finger on you? The big payoff. Oh, now, wait a minute. How could the vow put you on the spot when he's dead? You're guffing it wrong. The vow is the dress and the payoff is Benedict. Benedict? Yeah. Johnny. Uh, oh, uh, Melvin said the vow was only the front for the pelican out, but the real brain is Benedict. Well, maybe Benedict had something to do with the vow's murder. Yeah, it's an angle, please. Now, why would Benedict want you out of the way, Melvin? From nothing. I'm getting the toss around. A short kind like me don't cut the score with him. I'm cracking a straight line to clock around, so why the plant? I yes. Darling, translation. Uh, Melvin said he can't understand why Benedict wants him out of the way. He hasn't talked. Well, even if he did, who could understand him? Uh, Melvin, Melvin, are you sure you've told Papa everything? Now, would I slip a fly G like you to Roddy at a time like this? Yeah. Melvin, this morning, Benedict forgot all about the champagne in the office. Then he didn't want to tell me who brought it there. Now, why? I don't know. You can put me to bed with his shovel if I'm old. Yeah, I know, I know, Melvin. Well, maybe you're being taken for a ride has a connection with the murder. John, maybe Melvin knows something, only he doesn't realize it. Of course. And Benedict is scared he might wake up to it, so he sends him for a ride. Well, well, well that might be it. I tell you what, Melvin, you're staying here until you remember what Benedict doesn't want known. Well, I already told you everything I know, honest. Melvin, what you need is to be psychoanalyzed. Yeah. And I'm just the one to do it. Let me question him, Johnny. Well, nothing else seems to work. What do you say, Melvin? Anything you say, Johnny. You and the missus is back to back, especially seeing I got the small pile. The small pile? <laughs> he means he's in trouble, baby, and it might be captured. Oh. <laughs> I uh, hope your insurance policy is here in order, dear. <laughs> Melvin, think hard. It means so much. I'm practically blowing the fuse. Well, he says that's red when he thinks, but he doesn't say a thing that's of any value. We've been questioning you for two hours now, Melvin, and all we get is the same story. I run the bottle of sparkle to the office, knock on the door. Duval opens, grab, shut, lock, oh. Yeah, well, that's what I've been telling you. Johnny, can't you make these twists and take that lamp out of my eyes? That's blind to me. You think I was down at headquarters? You're only trying to make you feel at home. Yeah, besides, Melvin, I thought you said you were once under police willing for 36 hours. I was, only it wasn't like these twists. They were nice to me. Well, I can be just as nice as the police department. Here, you can have another eclair. Well, you say. Johnny, come away from the window and help us. Uh... I've got a very nice view from here. One of Benedict's men watching our hut. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I'm being mouthed. Let me see him. Oh. Who is he? Oh, it's the Ripper. I'm as good as up the hand. Now, Melvin, you're oh, safe. Here. Johnny, you don't have to count on Benedict. He knows more than old Hep's Well, Johnny is pretty bright, too. 
Why won't you get as far as the four dollar twenty? Well, as the saying goes, I'm living on time for it. No. Yeah. Why won't you make yourself come? Here, here's a chair. Oh, thanks, thanks. Oh, hey, Johnny, she's putting the lights in the eyes again. Melvin, you start singing for Kay. I've got to do some shopping for dinner. Well, get some egg class, will you? Well, like I was saying, I run the bottle of sparkle to the office, knocks on the door, the valve grabs. <laughs> Melvin, are you sure there isn't something you haven't told us? Well, I, uh, I got a girl in Jersey City. Johnny, come over to the window. The men watching the apartment, they're gone. There they are, I said. You think Benedict has given up trying to get Melvin? Not Benedict. That bloodhound never gives up. Oh, that must be Susan. How am I? I wonder why Benedict called his gorilla's off. Oh. Good evening. Is Mr. Duke in? Yes. I... Johnny, it's him. He's come to plant me. Hello, Benedict. Come on in. Good evening, Mr. How are you, Melvin? Well, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all Relax, right. Relax, Melvin. I just came up a little sore. What do you want? I thought we might possibly straighten out this little misunderstanding between us. Token of my good faith, I've withdrawn the men who were watching your apartment. Am I supposed to be grateful? Come oh, now, Mr. Duke. That isn't the attitude to take when I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Don't you forget what's happened? You mean that ride you gave Melvin? I'm sorry about that. And my boys are a little overzealous in performance of their duties. You know I wouldn't hurt you, don't you, Melvin? You'd give a week's take to see me talk it down. I assure you, Melvin, when I learned what the boys had tried to do to you, I was shocked. I only wanted to make amends. Yeah, with a shovel. Why did the boys take Melvin on a ride? They caught him taking money that didn't belong to him. Of course, what they wanted to do was far too drastic. I never swilled the tail. Uh, you couldn't want Melvin so badly because he holds the keys to Val's murder. Because you know he can send you to the chair. You're wrong. I have my own personal reasons for wanting him. You gonna give him up? No. Duke, um, some of my boys were anxious to tear this place apart. That's not the way I work. You're going to hand Melvin over to Keith, boy. He'll have a long way. You'll wait just as long before you see your wife. My wife, yeah. Imagine my surprise when I bumped into her this evening. Only a few blocks from here. I persuaded her to become my house guest for the time being. Well, you dirty lots of you lay a hand. It's easy, Johnny. See, if I'm not back at the Pelican Club in half an hour, the boys have their instructions. You can't get away with it, Benedict. I don't scare easy, Duke. Give you 24 hours to think it over. When I get Melvin, you get your wife back. Johnny, what are we going to do? Hours have been walking the floor, not saying a word. Melvin, Melvin, you know Benedict. Where's he likely to hide to? Well, he's got to hide out in Westchester. Sure, Johnny, that's it. No, 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 it's too obvious. Well, but nobody knows about it, Johnny. Ah, he's probably counting on my visiting there. If I know Benedict, he'd probably try to outsmart me by keeping a right at the Pelican Club. Yeah, yeah, he is full of tricks. Yeah. Melvin, I want you to draw me a layout of the Pelican. I'm paying a visit there. Oh, no, listen, Johnny, you got to take me with you. That place is big and full of rippers, and it's got more ins and outs than I could tell you about. All right, you can come with me. And I'm going to. Uh-oh, no, no, okay. There'll probably be trouble in plenty of Please, don't make me say you're going to have a good crazy. Please, please, please. All right, all right. All right. Come on. We can keep the motor running for a quick day. Let's go. Eight to the door, Johnny. Uh, I suppose Benedict has the place wired. Yeah, yeah, you keep it. All right, all right come on. The first step is to silence the alarm. You, you got the tools? Yeah, yeah. You keep a sharp lookout. Probably got a couple of the boys on the other side. I'm watching, Johnny. I'm watching. Are you, are you getting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm all right. I'm thinking it's one of the boys. I have flattened against the wall. I'll take him. Hey, what are you? Oh. Easy, 
You can proud of them, John. Yeah, sure. I went to Miss Perkins to finish the school. Now tie him up while I can just break any alarm. I'll take care of him like he was a pill. He's one of the rippers that took me on the picnic. <clears throat> there you are. Okay. Got to get the lock on this door. Yeah. This mess is wrapped up for the night. That's a tough lock, ain't it? You know, when I draw five yards of Sleepy Hollow, I had a bunk, a bunk that could open any lock there was. Except, of course, the one on the cell door. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could. I got it. Oh, good, good. Oh, where did I put my flashlight on? Yeah. This is a little kitchen, and that door leads to the hallway, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Melvin, I wish you'd make your teeth stop chatter. I'll, I'll put them in the pocket. All right. Come on, we're going into the hall. Yeah. <coughs> what was that? I, 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 I kicked something. Oh, right. Let's see what it was. Oh, a wine bucket. Yeah, but I, I didn't spill nothing. It was empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. That's funny. You know, come to think of it, the ones in the Val's office were empty, too. I don't follow you, girl. Melvin, when we were in the Val's office with the inspector, I remember distinctly those wine buckets being dry. So what? Was it there ice in the buckets when you stirred the champagne? Yes, sure, did it was. What happened to the water? What water? L- uh, look, look, Melvin, when ice melts, there's always water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yet the morning the murder was discovered, those two buckets were dry. Oh, it was dry. Well, it was, it was dry ice. Now, don't be funny. No, no, on the lamp. Dry ice. Why dry ice? Well, when Bennett just gives me the bucket with the champagne in him, he says we ain't got no regular ice. Oh. Well, dry ice would just evaporate, leaving no trace behind. Yeah. Now, that would account for the bucket being empty and dry. No, then I've got the answer. Yeah? No. Tell it to me. But too long. Yeah, later. Later, later. First, we've got to find the duchess. Come on. Let me just go out in the hallway and I'll walk lightly. Before I keep these slow. Now, look. Some lights on under that door further down the hall. That's where the mob hangs out. Uh-huh. Let's have a look. They're in there, all right. Through these portals, past the toughest grip that you ever laid a piece on. That thing's open. I get in a chair, Melvin, so I can take a look. Okay. Yeah, good. Right. Here we go. My name is Jack. Yeah. Let me show you a thing. Okay, I'll see you and raise the door button. What do you say to that, Chris? Huh. Don't think you can scare me out, Bugsy. I'll see you. A uh, full house, full of pie. Ha! Ha! She said. Look at him and weep. First floor, and in space. How do you like that? You're human, I tell you. Bugsy, dear, you're five dollars shy. Who says? I says. Hey, thank you. That's polite, right? Yeah. That's better. And, Mike, you can return that ace you just slipped into your pocket. You're accusing me of cheating? Listen, you big gorilla. If you don't return that card, I'll bust you one right in the kitchen. I ain't to be intimidated. I'm going to count these cards, and if I find only 51, Mike, you'll be sorry. One, two, three, four. Five, hey, what do you know? Here's an ace on the floor. Now, isn't that strange? And right by your chair, too. It's my deal, and I suggest you boys dig up a little more coin of the realm. Well, then, the, uh, hey, what goes? He sounds from here like a card game, Johnny. He's in there, all right. Thank you. And when I say that, I wish you made me promise never to play poker. Hey, listen, Johnny, listen. Them messes are easy with the lead. How are you going to spring it? Well, I'm going to walk where to hit the floor. Then I'll shoot out the light. While those gorillas are throwing it around, I'll pull around. Johnny, someone's coming this way. Huh? If he lets out a peep, it's up the handle for her. All right, all right. I'm going to meet him. Is that you, Mike? Oh, why aren't there some lights on? Oh, oh, let go, I guess. Oh, oh, oh. Did you get him, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, it's Benedict. He's not cold. Swing him over your shoulder, Mom. We're going to take him out to the car. I'll get stuck in it, Johnny. It's too risky alone. Come on, now. Here's Benedict. Go ahead. Do it. Okay. Oh, 
Put the gas for them guys when they turn under. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I will. I will. Well, what is that? Yeah, I'll say what it says. Here's the thing. No damage left me out. I'm playing along. At least the boss should show up before she cleans me out. I'll see you, boys. I'm ready for your show, boss. Show them at the floor. Somebody shot the light! I'm watching Johnny go. I'll stick that guy out of here. Oh, God. I got you, got you. Come on. I don't want to go. Come on before I ring your neck. Oh, 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 I'll stick in the door. I got him. Oh, it's me. I got him. Oh, it's me. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. This way, dear. Now it's back. Johnny, I think they're coming after us. He has the car ready for a fast getaway. All right, get the back door. Now, this way. Come on, Johnny. Get going, Ted. Yeah. I'm just out of breath. Johnny Melvin said you solved the murder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks way you drive. Oh. Well, oh. Uh, you can take us to headquarters. We're going to exchange Benedict for Bill. Johnny, how did Benedict kill the valve? With dry ice, baby. Dry ice? Uh huh. You see, the champagne buckets Melvin delivered to Duval were full of it. After Bill knocked Duval out and went into the bedroom, the dry ice evaporated into carbon dioxide. See? Duval regained consciousness, but fell asleep on the floor next to the champagne bucket where his body was found. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air, and it's made a layer on the floor of suffocating gas. Duval breathed it in and died of suffocation. Well, then if Bill hadn't been in the bedroom, he would have... Yes. No wonder Melvin was so valuable. He was the only one who knew that Benedict gave him the dry ice. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. I run the bottles of sparkle to the office... Knocks on the oh, door. Oh, no, it... not again. Uh, Duchess, Duchess, would you mind telling me why you didn't want to leave just now? I practically had to carry you out of that You door. certainly did. Why couldn't you have waited a few more minutes? I was ready to choke you for butting in when you did. But why? Oh, Johnny, I had four aces in my hand and two in my pocket. <laughs> Well, we turned Benedict over to Inspector Ross, and he very reluctantly released Bill Cross. The inspector's a man who hates to be proven wrong. Can Bill thank me, and they did it so nicely, I didn't have the heart to ask him for a fee. Uh, fortunately, the Duchess still had clutched in her hand $260 of the money she'd won playing poker. Well, after giving her a lecture on the evils of gambling, I took the money and paid our bill. And that concluded the case of the unseen witness. Uh, the moral, well, as the Duchess said, two extra aces never hurt. And so the curtain falls on the Duke and the Duchess and the case of the unseen witness, which was chosen by guest expert Matt Ellis. Mr. Ehrlich is author of the newly published novel, The Big Eye. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of two men who pitted their wits against each other. One, a professor of psychology. The other, a big-time mobster. As selected for your approval by Brett Halliday. Until then, this is your host, John Dixon-Carr, hoping you'll be with us again next week at this time. Written by Andrew Phillips. In the cast were Larry Haynes, Ann Shepard, Bill Zuckert, Joyce Gordon, Kermit Murdoch, Lawson Zerby, and Roger DeCogan. Music is under the direction of Emerson Buckley and was composed by Richard Dupay. Murder by Experts is produced and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Coke. Russ Dunbar speaking. This is the world's largest network serving more than 500 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System.